Here comes. No, nobody there. Dyslexia with an opening. Cherry Bomb went for everything with that full line of steam and missed Dyslexia. Comes back with a series of knockdowns into the backbreaker. Side slam as well. This could do it. Two in. No. Dyslexia. Less than half a count away. She was completely out of this matchup about 90 seconds ago, but now with a chance, no. Cherry Bomb the jawbreaker. Watch Dyslexia. Has her hooked in. Could this be a DDT? That'll put the lights out quickly. Cherry Bomb counters. Uh oh. Anaya just waiting for now big forearm shots, driving her head first into the into that ladder. What does Anaya have planned here? She's psyching herself up now, just walking across the ladder like it's a bridge. Oh, God oh, almighty! Oh. Hooks up body block. Off the ladder, onto Athena, on the floor. It is the unprotected floor, the typical unprotected floor of this building. And Athena being rolled in the ring smartly by Hanaya. Hanaya went right for the cover. She didn't waste any time in between delivering that moonsault body block and go for a pinfall attempt. <laughs> Lifting up the stunned Athena right now, trying to. Well, maybe not. I was about to say Athena's just dead weight right now, but she's coming back to life here. I think she saw that yellow ladder out of the corner of her eye and didn't want to be drilled into it. Instead, drilling into the abs of Hanaya. Taking the wind out and possibly cracking one. Athena has Hanaya up, bringing her down oh. across the ladder. And that is not good. And Athena Cracken goes for a cover. One, two. Only getting a two. Athena smartly, both, both women right now in this match, both competitors have gone for a cover after using those the ladders. Dude, I'll use those Ds as a weapon along the skull of Hanaya the Howling Huntress. Look at the intensity on the face of Athena. She, don't, she doesn't want to lose two in a row here, especially against Hanaya. Vicious kicks. Hanaya just laying him in. Yeah, just brutalizing the chest of Athena. Dropping Athena down to the mat. And you can see Hanaya, she's got something planned and she's looking around for something. Getting the old standby, it looks like. Setting up those chairs on the outside. Obviously something very, very demented planned by Hanaya. She finds herself in this situation for the first time in her career. Sometimes this is not a, a direction you want to see a match take, but this is a tables, ladders, chairs match in a style for the first time ever. Women's tables, ladders, and chairs match. Hanaya building something on the outside with those chairs. Both women willing to risk it all. Imagine if this doesn't go as Hanaya has planned. Oh, God. A death knell for this matchup for her. Talk about ultra-violent feng shui. Talk about the level of desire for victory Hanaya much ha must have. But look at Athena. Hanaya taking yeah, too much time. Athena too much time. Uh, regaining her bearings back in this matchup. And Hanaya doesn't know it yet. Hanaya is too busy barking orders at her stand. Oh, no. Oh, no. Look, did her knee give out? Did an ankle give out? Oh, no. Oh, no. Taking out everybody. Into Athena, or into Hanaya and those helpers. They've got a bit of a budding rivalry that they're looking to renew here tonight. For Milo, though, she definitely has the power and size advantage against Bale. I think you could say that about all the competitors on her, on her team. Oh, definitely. Both of her, both her partners, Barbie Hayden and Jesse K, certainly much larger in stature than Santana Garrett or Jules Malone. Yeah, but Santana Garrett's got that power of the hair. And the headband seems to be the source of her energy, which, which also seems to be boundless. <laughs> Got her sight set on Jody DeMilo in the corner. 
building momentum with that cartwheel. And catching her with the elbow. Handspring back elbow by Santana. Trying to Irish whip the larger lady, but it didn't pay off for her. Maybe trying to lure into a trap. Yeah, I think she suckered it in right there. And now it's Jody DeMilo, unfortunately, one step behind. Gets taken down with that head scissors. Quick tags by the new tandem. New six, three well, I mean, this is the first time, to the best of my knowledge, that Santana, Jules, and Zandra have ever teamed together. So certainly a new team. Whether or not they will remain that way, obviously yet to be determined. Uh, I think a lot of it will probably have to do with their success or failure here as a combination going up against Jody DeMilo, Barbie Hayden, and Jesse McKay. Right into, uh -oh. excuse me, Jesse K. Come on, man. My bad, my bad. It's all right. And right now, DeMilo, though, choking out the hardcore princess with her foot, attempting to get a pinball attempt at the same time. Now just toying with the Canadian-born hardcore princess. Samoa oh. drop, huge impact. Driving on her spine, making the oxygen leave her body with that force. Referee Kid from Freaks and Geeks now admonishing DeMilo as she grabs the hair of the princess. Oh, just driving her face first across that top rope. Barbie Hayden tagging herself in. Now Barbie Hayden, the queen of eight by 10 sales, I believe, in the ring. Right now, the queen of kicks to the guts. She's beautiful, but she's got that vicious side to her. She really likes to dictate the pace of the match when she's wrestling. A very deliberate pace, which she likes to set. And right now, she's, she's used to getting what she wants in life, and she takes that into the ring. Oh, what she wants is to drive her knees to the back of Jules Malone's head with her throat on the ropes. These two men, singles competition at the Uncensored Rumble. Yeah, a lot, a lot, you know, many fans considering it to be a breakout match for both of these competitors. One thing you have to keep in mind tonight, these newcomers, all of them want to make an impact. <laughs> For Jules Malone, Barbara Hayden stepped up in a big way in the absence of the champion at the Uncensored Rumble. I can confirm, as surly as she is, Jessica Havoc is in the house here tonight, and she is not in a good mood. Not Keep it growing, her world title reign here in Women's Superstar Uncensored, but WSU Championships at stake right now. Jenny Rose has the golden opportunity. Well, you could definitely tell that she's enjoying the Midwest food. I, I don't she's not a, she's not too sluggish. No, not at all, it doesn't look it. Jenny Rose, though, taking it right to the fist, Jenny though. Rose has the speed. Oh. Jenny Rose has the hunger. But I will say this, both women are well-traveled wrestlers. You're absolutely Extensive right. Extensive time in Japan. Oh, we got to cover here once again, Jenny Rose able to kick out before You're becoming three. a regular Gordon Soli. You're just dropping these gems. Well, that's what Or I Corey do. Macklin, you're one of them. Well, right now. Shoving contest. Going right to the, right to the quad with that kick. This is Jenny Rose's biggest opportunity. She's wrestling here right in front of our announce table. Her family and friends from Philadelphia are sitting here. And what a moment it would be for Jenny Rose to walk away with the championship. But Lufisto isn't making it easy. Oh, Jenny Rose, head of steam with that clothesline, trapping Lufisto in the corner. Now using her full body weight to drive that shoulder into the midsection. Hooking the leg, but once again, not able to get the three count. And there's Jenny Rose. But she's staying on top of Lufisto, not letting Lufisto any time to recover. With the world championship on the line. What a way to cap off Jenny Rose's huge 2014 by deep crowning the Lufisto, the champion. And it's looking like it's going to become a reality right now as Jenny Rose is looking to fold Lufisto in the two right now. Not able to, but she smartly breaks the hold, and now she's got something else in mind, those hard stomps. She's staying on the world champion. Almost stunning this audience here. This, this crowd loves Lufisto very much, and they're stunned at what Jenny Rhodes has been able to do thus far in this match. Oh, 
Like you said, Jenny Rose looking to cap off, making it. If she wins this championship, the biggest year of her career by a mile. J. Rowe is doing exactly what she needs to do to win this match. She needs to stay on Lufisto. She actually should start wearing down those knees because anyone that has watched Lufisto throughout the years knows that her knees are bad. She has weak knees. She needs to stay on those knees to win this match. Now, right now, go work on that spine, the head, the neck, the chin. Looking to humble Lufisto right now. Looking to take her championship, the most humbling experience she could have. And you know that's what'll break on her back. <laughs> and pulling the hair, too. So I'm sorry, and I apologize for this. It's all right, I always go straight down the middle. Uh, nope. Well, I mean, I'm sure if she spreads them that way, that's exactly where you're gonna go. Exactly, bro. We, we're leave jo yeah, Jules Malone out of this. Oh, yeah. Oh, huge head bump by Jules Malone. Nevaeh's out on her knees. Nevaeh's reeling. Oh, no. Oh, Kidman style bomb. That could be in here as we got to cover again. One, two. And once again, Nevaeh getting that shoulder up before a count of three. Back and forth. Jules Malone, though, with the advantage at the moment. Ooh. Slugging away at Nevaeh. Nevaeh's got to uh, get something started here. She can't take much more punishment. Uh, that could be it again as side slam into a pinning combination, but once again, only a two count. Jules Malone once again going for a submission. Dragon Sleeper working over the neck of Nevaeh. Nevaeh backing her right up into that corner, breaking up that hold, and now Nevaeh laying the boots to the midsection of Jules Malone. Oh, God almighty. Mudhole style stomping by the Gem City Queen. I can see you're really entrenched in this matchup, Dave. I, I apologize, guys. You gotta understand, you know, this is family. Oh, and back to the Dragon Sleeper. And it's not looking good right now for your sister-in-law. Not at all, not at all. Stretching out her neck and shoulder area, trying to get her to tap out to this move. But if I know anything about my sister, she has a, a thing about her that she's never gonna give up, and she could take a lot of punishment. So the one thing I'm gonna tell you about Nevaeh is she was, she's uh -oh. a fighter. But can she For take this? For one that I've, since I've yeah, met this her, is, this she's is, been a this fighter. This is not a normal, you know, this is not normal for wrestling matches, especially ladies matches. Oh, ducking that barbed wire oh! back. Oh! <laughs> that kick to the stomach right there. That drop Jules Malone down like a sack of potatoes. Looking to gain her composure here as well as Nevaeh. Nevaeh still feeling the wrath of what Jules has laid on her earlier. Oh, oh man! You want to talk about a hard shot to the face. Like I said, she's a fighter. I'm glad you didn't take that setup, to be honest with you. But I'm, I'm trying to be above it. Good. Catch me the next match. Okay. Oh, oh, nice German suplex right there with the bridge. Shoulders down. Well, Jules Malone able to kick out before three. Nevaeh trying to get some energy from this crowd, feed off their adrenaline. Oh! This huge forearm shot right to the face of Jules Malone. Has to be knocking the silly. Oh, Jules Malone knocking a close on, but being met with another one, dropping her down. And Nevaeh looks to be ready to put this match away right now. Well, I'll be completely honest with you guys. After a nine hour drive and a match with Alex Colon. you. And right now, Ready to break me and him in half. Look at the pressure she's adding on to that backbreaker hold. Look at the way me and him just being stretched out, like you were saying, working over that lower back. The strength of Jessica Havoc as she drops me and him right back down across her knee. Once again, pushing down underneath the chin, trying to get as much leverage as humanly possible. Jessica Havoc is a woman with no remorse. Mia Yim, where are you going? She's trying. She's trying something, but the power, the power of Havoc once again. Two and only getting a two count. Hey, Mia made it clear that she's not doing DJ's bidding, but that's not how Jessica Havoc's viewing it right now. Jessica Havoc's viewing her as an ally of DJ Hyde.
She's going for a superplex, it looks like, but Mia Yim doing everything she has left in her to block it. Fighting off the much bigger woman. Oh, hard shot right to the face. Oh! Oh, but using her agility to her advantage right now. Off the rope she goes. Huge drop kick, taking down Havoc into a cover. You can see. But oh, yeah, the referee's credit, he continued the count. But I still don't know that one second could have prevented Mia Yim from winning this one. Series of kicks to the legs of Jessica Havoc. There's uh -oh, that strength, uh -oh. though. There is that power like no other woman in this company has. Sit down, power bomb into a cover, and that, oh no. Once. It was nearly academic for Jessica Havoc, but Mia Yim <laughs> showing that she can take a beating hey. and keep going. Mia Yim with a lot of heart, but Jessica Havoc with that rage running through her blood right now. All she sees is DJ Hyde at the moment. And I know how hard it is to confuse Mia Yim for DJ Hyde, but that's all she has on her mind right now. And Jessica has had about 90% of this match so far. This crowd firmly behind Jessica Havoc right now. Jessica Havoc asking, who's the woman? I wonder if Nick's been asked that. He might have asked other people. <laughs> you are now the most hated man oh. in this company. You give one opening to Shimoda, she's going to take advantage of it. You're absolutely right. Jenny Rose hasn't gone a single moment of this match without feeling pain from Shimoda since Shimoda's been on offense. I'll tell you what though, Jenny Rose isn't, isn't begging her off whatsoever. Two, Jenny Rose, a lesser female competitor might have been begging her off by now. Jenny Rose wanted to compete, compete against the best. She's taking it now, that single like Boston Crab. Look at the angle on that yeah. too. That's the problem with the angle though, it gives Jenny Rose a chance to grab that hair. Jenny Rose has to be careful how hard she pulls back on the hair of Nima Shimoda. She could be doing more damage to herself. Reaching out and getting that rope once again. But look, saving herself in this match. Look at the way Jenny Rose, every single time she gets to that rope, is able to will herself to those ropes despite being in those submissions. Look how slow Jenny Rose is moving now. I've never seen Jenny Rose be dominant, dominated this much. Jenny Rose now coming alive. Oh, Shimoda though, dropping to that knee. Jenny Rose starting to pick up the speed here. We've got a cover here, we're only getting a one count. Jenny Rose is definitely going to pick up the speed in this match. She wants to have any chance against Shimoda. Once again, only getting a one count. Nima Shimoda very defiant in these kickouts, not even taking the time to Wait for a two count. She's showing Jenny Rose just how much she has left in her tank. Absolutely right. It's Jenny Rose high atop the skate zone here. Taking out Shimoda. Going right for a cover. Getting both legs hooked. Two and oh. Ooh. Only a two count. But she's gaining ground from one count to two counts. Her, her offense starting to take its effect on Shimoda. Look at the way Shimoda fighting out of that waist lock. Oh, just Under paint brushing her. Yeah, disrespect here. Not really. Jenny Rose. Not really disrespect. Had her trying to beat some respect in her one or the other. Once again, Shimoda not allowing Rose to get any sustained offense. Rose now poised on the second turnbuckle, coming down with an arm drag. The backslide could have her. That could be ill. Oh, only a two count. Trying to Impressive. And she's a waist lock applied. And there's Kimberly now reversing it into a headlock of her own. Bringing her right down into a side headlock here. 
Rick Catano not even paying attention on the apron to what's going on to his partner. I, I thought, see, it's always been about the gold to him. This is what's surprising me about his attitude right now. Well, he's got a, he's a gold digger, and I'm not sure if we should call him he. He's the Laura Jane Grace of WSU. Plays by our own rules. Yeah, clearly, clearly. But meanwhile, in the ring, Kira and Kimberly once again locking up in the center. Kimberly backing up Kira into the ropes. Stiff shot across the chest. And now sending Kira, oh, Kira reversing it. Kick to the midsection, off the rope she goes. Kick to the side of the head. And back, crack, excuse me, cracking the back of Kimberly. You can call it a back cracker. No one's going to yell at you. Well, there's a stent on there into a cover. One, two, and only getting a two count. Kira, looks like she's bringing a lot of skill to the table here. Rick might have found himself a good ringer. Quite possibly, but we're still in the early going here at WSU Powers Tag Team Championship match. Kimberly, though, there's that fighting spirit she has. Just elbowing her way out of that fireman's carry, though, but she gets caught once again. Kick to the midsection. Now she's got Kira's now Kimberly up on her shoulders. And what does she have planned is up until about five minutes ago, we know she's going to be in the match. And right across the midsection, Kimberly might have cracked a rib or something. Annie Social smartly breaking up the cover. Annie Social, the veteran in the ring right now, making sure that. She keeps that tag team championship firmly around the waist oh, of the chicks. Split out jawbreaker, tagging in Annie Social. I'll never forget the image of Kimberly at the eighth anniversary when her and Annie Social finally won the tag team championships, holding those belts in the air, covered in blood, a huge knot on her head, and Annie Social now bringing over. Kira bridging up in her eyes, the look on her face when Kira was able to kick out of that attack. Yeah, we, we talk about. Rick Catalo being the baddest bitch in professional wrestling. Annie Social is the baddest bitch in Philadelphia. Men cower away from her when she, she walks down the street. She might have been be the baddest bitch who was actually born a bitch in the world. And right now, Annie Social taking it to the supposed superhero of the dark uh -oh. side of the moon. And Rick Catalo finally getting in on the action. The big gun. Well, Annie Social has no fear when it comes to Rick Catalo. Rick Catano now using the size advantage that he has. I wouldn't comment on, on, on Rick's size. And she wants to call the shot. She wants to dictate the oh. pace of the match. Yavea she's just... happy when she's in control. I think that's been the MO of Barbie Hayden since day one. She's a very controlling, conniving individual. I'm not going to argue with that. We've seen the way that she's manipulated some of the referees in the past. Yeah, opening the ropes for her as if she's some sort of royalty. She's got nothing. Well, she's not the king, she's not the queen. Nothing. She's not going to be this year. She's the NWA World, World Women's Champion. And Barbie Hayden just holding on to the ropes like a spider monkey. Oh! oh. She, she had nowhere to go. Well, she backed herself into her corner, literally. And this crowd is solidly behind the Gem City Queen. Well, right now she's laying a beating on Barbie Hayden. And once again, Barbie Hayden rushing to the ropes. I feel like every champion, they come into a title match. They have some sort of advantage. I can't put my, my finger on it. There's just something that comes along with having that championship. I don't know if it's the, you know, if you're the champion, you get paid more. I don't know if that's enough to motivate, but typically a champion has a certain advantage, but I, I almost feel like that's nullified because Nevaeh has the support of the faithful CGW fans that have come out to Voorhees, New Jersey for the Queen and King tournament this year. Right now, Nevaeh going downstairs and then hooking up a nice snap suplex, taking Barbie Hayden, Hayden right over. That are stacked up for a deep cover, only enough for a two count. Barbie Hayden now trying to fight out from underneath. Has that arm ringer into oh. a swinging neck breaker. Very nicely done. Oh. 
Barbie Hayden now just stalking Nevaeh, trying to pick her spot. And she does. Taking Nevaeh down to the mat once again. Now just ramming her head into that turnbuckle. Make it two times. Here's Barbie Hayden showing that confidence again now that she is in control. Well, yeah, I mean, if there's one thing that Barbie Hayden does not lack, it's definitely confidence. She thinks very highly of herself, I'll just put it that way. As of now, she's been able to back that up, and she's taking it to, to Nevaeh. Excuse me. Put all of her body weight down across the throat of Nevaeh. What do you call that? She's a big Ben Affleck fan from her attire. No, it's uh, Matthew Cox. Not, not Ben Affleck. Party five guy, but she goes through the ropes right now that time, courtesy of Veda Scott. And we have to get a little serious here right now, as these two women are very serious about becoming the new spirit champion. Yeah, but first they got to advance to the semifinals. Drop kick to the midsection, sending Veda Scott back into the ropes. She's got a little out of momentum too with that roll. Didn't catch all of her though. But enough to send her into the ropes, and now she's way laying on her with those chops right to the chest. Veda Scott wants none of that. How could she do this if she's blind? She's the woman without fear. I haven't seen a blind person kick this much ass since JYD back before I was born. Oh, huge clothesline by Bates. But only getting a two count on Veda Scott. She's even covering her eyes. How is she seeing all this? Leva Bates is quite impressive, despite all the jokes we're making about the Daredevil attire. Leva Bates is one of the favorites to win the Spirit Championship tournament. As well she should be, you know. She had a great matchup with Cherry Bomb back at the eighth anniversary. Came up a little short, but oh! Oh my God! Running knees straight up to the midsection. Beta Scott's wishing she probably hasn't made a return here tonight. Beta Scott's all about the competition, able to lure in. I'll tell you what, Leva Bates is summoning the, the abilities of the Daredevil, Maybe she's as she is really impervious to pain here in this match, after what Veda Scott just did. Maybe she should summon a Lariat, might be more effective. We're having a standoff right now, Veda Scott's ready for a fight if you look at her. Scott off the ropes. Oh, man. Oh, into a Bulldog. Picture perfect Bulldog. Springing off the middle ropes, too. Now D Daredeviling her. And just ground and pound, Mountner. But only getting a two count as Leva Bates able to kick out before the three. And Veda Scott this time though, staying on top of Leva. Bates now on the end of a beating from Scott as Scott vertical suplexer into another pinning combination. One, two, only getting a two count this time. Crowd rallying behind Leva Bates right now, Veda Scott. Didn't win any fans over here in WSU after her, what she did to Rick Cataldo last time out. She was here. Oh, O'Connor Roll getting a two. And she really couldn't get in the, quite the right position there. And Scott able to kick out. Look at that big tackle taken down. Bates, and once again into a pinning combination. She sought out some amazing training. Talk about uh, the incomparable Hall of Famer. A couple of Hall of Famers, actually. First, Scott Hall, Razor Ramon, whatever you want to call her. Call him, I should say. And uh, the living legend, Larry Zabisco. Man for well over 35 glorious years has mastered the human game of chess and professional wrestling. Passed it on to Santana Garrett. And the uh, pride of Portugal needs a break in the ropes. Does Shana. Santana certainly came dressed knowing that she was uh, facing a, a non-American, if you will. I'm not sure that America and uh, Portugal have any major outstanding issues I'm aware of. We'll create some here, who knows? Oh, 
Shauna looking to embarrass Santana Garrett in that exchange. Santana has held uh, the NWA World Women's title, which uh, is one of the oldest active championships in all of pro wrestling. The lineage of that title can be traced back to the original pioneers of women's professional wrestling. We're talking about the likes of the fabulous Moolah and Mildred Burke. With Santana carrying on a very rich tradition. It goes back uh, well over half a century. And uh, you can see Shauna detected the bridging strength, the flexibility of Santana, tripped her up by the legs. Only got uh, an ear fall trapping the shoulders. The old Greco-Roman knuckle lock. And uh, Greco-Romans didn't master the springboard into the arm drag, though. That's all Santana, who quickens the pace at a deep arm drag traditional style now. Santana looking good in there. Sideline head scissors. I don't think uh, Zabisco or Scott Hall ever used the head scissors quite that pretty. Nobody home for Shauna in the corner. Roll up by Santana. Stacks her up for two. Man. Offensive explosion. Santana Garrett. Shauna ducked her head too early. Sunset flip. Shauna up. Oh. Shauna came down with both boots right to the chest cavity. You could feel the wind rushing out of Santana. That could be it. No. A little. Starting to send her usually well-balanced mind off kilter a little. Oh, for a cover here, only getting a two count. Oh, look at this. Impressive offense here from Leva Bates. She's got the head scissors and a cross arm breaker. For Going for the arm breaker right underneath the armpit right now. Extra leverage, actually, on all the joints, the elbow and the wrist, in fact. Cherry Bomb might be ready to tap out here. How long can Cherry Bomb hold on this? She's dead center in the ring. She might have a little bit of a leverage advantage, as you see there. Oh, rolls up into a cover here. Ooh, only getting a two count. Cherry, I think, is a little surprised by the offense of Miss Bates. Leva Bates going the work on Cherry Bomb now. Or would it be Bates Dudley? No, it's Denim Pants Dudley. Uh, yeah, didn't you hear me earlier? Cherry Bomb right now, though, not letting Bates get any sustained momentum. Just eyeing her up right now for that drop kick in the corner. God, the viciousness in the eyes of Cherry Bomb. Compressing the spine completely, top of the neck, under the turnbuckle, feet right into the posterior. We got a cover here. Look at the leg again, this one, two. It. Only a two count. Cherry Bomb now starting to get more and more irate as Leva Bates refuses to stay down here. But the more irate she gets, the more she opens herself up to make a mistake and for Bates to be able to capitalize. Oh. OK, how was that legal? It, it was above the belt. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know. I think Bates learned a little too much from the antics of those Dudleys. Oh, kicks off Cherry Bomb. Cherry Bomb, though. Not kicked with enough force to go into the guardrail. What is Leva Bates? Oh, oh, man, that Russian leg sweep. Still got her spine, though. Yeah. I think it took a little bit out of both of them. Yeah, both their spines, I think, hit that ring apron. Yeah, but Leva Bates training. The men who trained her, high risk, high reward. Sometimes you got to give a little to get a lot. Cherry Bomb, even in pain, even in agony, still takes time to point out the flaws in what the haters are saying. That's, that's the problem. She's too busy worrying about the haters. There's not many of them, so she's got to shut them down. And both women now struggling to get in that ring, beat, beating that 10 count. Both women now back into the ring. Cherry Bomb goes for a wild right, but gets caught. Now chopping away is Leva Bates. She's got some padding. Oh, the damage is done though. Double chopping. High kicking Leva Bates now. Firing away on Cherry Bomb. She's going to break Cherry Bomb's winning streak if she keeps this up. And here she goes, head full of steam. Coming in and crashing down on Cherry Bomb. Hook in the waist. Northern Light suplex. That could be it. Cherry Bomb. 
She was able to use her leverage to get under a much larger opponent and then great flexibility. The way that she was able to switch her position to the bridge, I'm surprised that wasn't enough. Jessie Kay again fighting up from the bottom here. She's got that arm hook putting all her body weight into that move. That's a crazy move. You know, it's very difficult for competitors too with longer hair to draw those big deep breaths. Especially when the hair is blocking your face when there's the condensation from the sweat. It almost creates like a cloth that you have to breathe through. Not too dissimilar to the effects of a mask, but like you said again, Jessie K using her size, picking up Swain off the mat. Uh-oh. I don't know how she's gonna get her off of her, but this can and whoa! Wow, a great change of the position. And Jessie K using her good arm, the right arm that Isabel Sweeney has not been working on. In order to bring her down to side slam, she needs to go quicker in the pin if she wants to, she wants to be the victor in this contest, at least right here, right now. Oh, big clothesline. And a, oh, this time with the back elbow. Jessie K finding a second wind here in this match. Sweeney reverses, sends her off, goes for that backdrop, not this time. Great execution on that spinning neck breaker. Does she have her beat? One, two, three, no. Are they yelling Fungul at her? Yes. I thought that was Italian. You can't say Fungul. It's a secret show, you can do whatever you want. Oh, including that, double knees right to your face. Gonna be careful not to cut her on the chin. Swania slipping here, trying to get in position. Her back turned to her opponent. Oh, caught her hard with that knee to the side of the head, coming down on the moonsault body press. Did she knock her out? No. It looked like Jesse K was trying to get entirely out of the way, but she wasn't able to fully get out of the way. She got caught with the knee, and Azabel Swain now looking to once again target that left arm. Jesse K. Oh, sending her down with that spine buster. A maneuver like that not only affecting the vertebrae, but you hit your head hard when you come down to the canvas like that. Now, fans here really want to see Isabel swing you lose. Now, what's going on right here? Pulling the official in between her and her opponent just to land that cheap shot once again to the arm. Now, she's got it barred up. Coming off the ropes. Oh, she's gonna break her arm like that. Shauna's sitting up. Shauna has no idea. Look behind you. Dickens is not a very good ring second. He's not that good of a boyfriend either with what he was trying to do with Candice LeRae. Oh, oh my God. You want to mark me, bitch, huh? You want to me? Shauna's all tied up. While Dickinson bringing it to the attention of the official that Shauna's foot was on the rope, who the hell do you think put it there? Havoc stalking her prey. Yeah. Just stomping down yeah. on the chest. And taking a page out of Sammy Callahan's playbook, an opponent that she defeated at Queen and King last year. And since then, dubbing herself the Havoc Death Machine and certainly living up that moniker tonight. Havoc being distracted by the official, Dirty Daddy slides in the ring to, sh to save Shauna. Oh no. I, I don't like this. I'm scared. And what is Shauna doing? Crawling on top of the table, Havoc arguing with Dickinson, telling the official that he, she should eject him. Oh, and in the meantime, Shauna striking with the belt. Come on, ref. Referee with his hands full. Shauna coming off the ropes. Whoa. Able to. Oh, that was a bad landing for Havoc. Do we have a new champion? No. You know, it looks like she was going for a DDT. I think that might have worked better that than a DDT. Been, yeah, that might have been more devastating. Yeah. 
almost like a gut wrench driver. Whatever you want to call it, it was certainly effective. This is the first time that we've seen Havoc struggling in this match. Put it in the corner, bro. Almost sort of like oh. a brain eater. You want to slap me, bitch? Bring her down. Huh? Come off the roof. Huh? Go. Now Havoc in uncharted oh. territories. And Shauna is not in a good place right now. Oh. Shauna once again going to the eyes, I'll tell you what. No matter how big and bad you are, there's always going to be vulnerable points on the body. The eyes are one of them. Shauna struggling for that sunset flip power bomb. Can she get it? The answer is no. But again, going oh, back to the leg. Nice. Even with the momentum of the sunset flip, she wasn't able oh. to take Jessica oh. Havoc down. Havoc got caught with the knee to the back. She hit the back of her head. Now she's trying to extricate herself from this position. And oh. instead, take it out with the double stomp. I think if Cherry would have just put a little bit more weight on those shoulders, she would have had her pinned. She doesn't know what that means. She doesn't like weight. But she likes weights. Oh, no. True. Ooh, that's big back elbow right there. Solo Darling coming alive, oh. getting her second sugar rush. Oh. Following up oh, for a cover, but only getting a two count as Cherry Bomb able to keep this match alive here. Solo Darling trying to fire up the crowd right now, feed off their energy as she tries to reload with a little bit more sugar. I don't think that's Mountain Dew. I think it's Dr. Pepper. Well, Mountain Dew's gimmick infringement. Actually, it's a Slurpee. That's a Slurpee. I didn't know they sold them this time of year. She's amped. Oh! That's... Uh-oh. She's soloing up. Those kicks right to the abdominal muscles. Those caffeine-infused kicks. Oh, and caffeine infused chops now. Chopping down Cherry Bomb. She just blew a kiss to Nick Papa Giorgio. He's being bought. She bought me. I'm into her. <laughs> oh, man. Ass drop. That's Different it. but effective. That could be it. Two and ho. Oh. I'm going to date her. You should ask her out. Go now. Go ask her in the middle of the match. I don't want to make this match oh, okay. bad. Oh, okay. Good. Or good. So darling, she's still oh, high man. on sugar. She's hell wigging those ropes. Think she can reach the top? No. Makes sense. Oh. Going back to that hug. Cherry Bomb having none of it. I don't blame her. BS! Oh! It's determination in this match right now as Lane has been relentless on her attacks, but there's Sky taking out Lane into a cover here. One. Only a one count. Lane seeking a little bit of distance from Angie Sky, but she might not be in the best position. Yeah, trying to retreat on the outside, but she did not get to the floor. There's no safe spot here in the skate zone. Swinging wildly. Did not go far enough. This might have been within uh, her plan here. Kind of yeah, this is her in. good. The midsection of, of Sky completely exposed here. Vicious side of lane. The kicks. Look at that look in her face. Absolutely evil intentions on her mind right now. But again, taking way too long, and that's not how you're gonna win matches. Very arrogant cover. No need for that. You disrespectful little bitch. And Angela Slane calling Angela Sky disrespectful after that pin attempt. I, uh, I think she's calling more than just disrespectful. Oh, got her down to a knee. <laughs> Trying to kick a hole right into her. Angel of Death, ascending to the heavens here in Voorhees, New Jersey. Definitely has something in mind here. Uh, she's got her cross. She's going to go for a tornado. Oh, oh no. But oh, Angela's no. Lane. Look at the strength of Lane here. Oh, huge spine buster. I just dumps her down. And that's got it once again, only a one count. Angela Lane can't believe it. She's got a look of shock on her face. Oh. 
forearms from Sky back in the lane. And once again, like you said, bad ring positioning. Oh. And now a bad mouth full of teeth. Perhaps some are broken. Does WSU have a dental plan? No. So now they're unpopular. Up bye here. Bye, oh! Just drives her face first into the mat. This could be it. Modified peak there into a cover. Only a two count. An awesome height on that standing senton. Atomico. Look at the agility oh. of Anaya. What Anaya. an arm drag. Anaya impressing the audience. Oh man, she was running rings around Shauna until she got caught with that elbow. You're absolutely right, and Shauna better stay on top of her right now. And I able to get out of the way, bashes Shauna's head into that top turnbuckle. She comes springing in, oh, high cross body. Awesome, that's it, that is it, two, it. A lot of impact on that springboard cross body, and Shauna now has to retreat. Trying to get a little bit, a little bit of time to regroup. I don't know if, that, don't know if that's too smart. And I've been flying all over this ring so far. And it doesn't look like she's afraid to go flying outside the ring. Looks like she's building up ahead of steam here. And Shauna better keep her eye on Hanaya right now. She's got that target locked on Shauna. Oh, no. oh, she's going to do it. She's going to do it. Going for a baseball slide, uh -oh. but Shauna caught her. Oh, this is not pretty at all. Oh, oh Lord almighty. I think she just grazed that ring post there. Oh, look at this beat down now. Look at the aggression of Shauna. Maybe she was the one luring Hanaya in the whole time. And those are paying customers, Shauna. Yeah, the customer's usually wrong in this building. Customer service isn't her specialty. Obviously not. But she doesn't need it when she's got the advantage in a matchup like this. Shauna just measured her. Right in the solar plexus of Naya yeah, there. I think, I think yeah. Brazil won at that foot the other day against Germany. Another fetish? What's going on in this team? It's, like, it's a World Cup reference. Oh, oh volleyball. Oh, man. Shauna's feet have been lethal. The last two shots Naya has taken. Let, leaving her grounded. Naya is definitely not in Voorhees right now. See, Daniel Yost won't disqualify her. She's got Daniel Yost in her back pocket. Mm, hard shot. Square to the jaw with that right forearm. Shauna showing off her mean streak right now, but she might have clipped her own arm, her own elbow. Felt the effects of that last one. Series of kicks right to the abdomen. There's no feet you love, Dan. Yes, at Mutiny, when Mickey Knuckles was just taking her to the woodshed. She I mean, there, there you see her resilience, too. She's so tough. Right there, catching Athena with that combination. That's the thing about Jules Nolan. You can never count her out. Just when you think you got her beat, she's only getting started. Now trying to get the arms wrapped around the legs to apply pressure to the neck of Athena. But Athena's smart here. She's on her knees in a position where Jules Malone cannot get the full amount of leverage needed to make this maneuver as effective as possible. That's a very keen observation, MLJ. But that's why Athena's in a position where she can challenge for the big hit at WSU World title. So we crown a new champion tomorrow. A new era of WSU beginning. Jules Malone giving up on a hold, but at the same time, she just drops all the way down to the small of the back of Athena as Athena just bridges up, propelling Jules Malone to the corner. Well, Jules Malone going after Athena on the ground. This could have been a mistake. She already had her opponent down on the canvas. She brought her back up to her feet just to drive her back down with that side slam. Jules Malone having trouble here. As it's Athena displaying her tenacity, her toughness. 
Oh wow, catches her in an inside cradle of sorts. And even though she wasn't able to get the pin, certainly reversing the momentum. Killer with that double stomp. Oh, just driving her down again, a variation of a curb stomp. Now Athena getting the crowd behind her. She climbs to the second rope. What's she going for? Oh, caught her with that senton. Big time back senton. She had that leg hooked, but I don't think there's enough pressure placed upon the shoulder blades there. Of course, Athena, she suffered that shoulder injury in the first secret show, was forced to miss the second, had that unbelievable, that standout match with Hanaya. The third secret shown right here, taking it to Jules Mullen, straight kicks to the face. Someone as tough as Jules Mullen, sometimes that's what it's gonna take. But you gotta think that the fans here have to appreciate the toughness of Jules Malone. Oh man, look at that, just firing back. Oh, right on the butt of the jaw. He's got her hooked up. Gonna be looking for Northern Lights suplex. Takes her over the impact into the pin. And that's not good enough for Athena. Instead, using her power to bring Jules Malone back up to her feet. Oh, just to kick her in the face. Athena going for the cover, but Jules Malone able to lift that left shoulder right up off of the canvas. You're a braver man than I. No yes, look at that! A group of men getting out of the way of these female competitors without second thought. Oh my god, just threw her right over the guardrail too. Tossing her like a sack of potatoes, but Soraya does not stay down. Gotta be Fights back in fact. Gotta be doing the best that I can to call the action as they start to go out of my vantage point. It looks like Soraya is choking Mickey over the top of the guardrail. I want Soraya Knight around every WSU show. What is going on right here? Can we get some control, please? Offer her a cookie. That's usually how he settles things with people. We need more. I'm going to go get more security. Soraya Knight does not care about lawsuits. She does not care about legal ca calamities. She's just trying to cause any kind of riotous action she can. Mickey takes advantage of it, bopping her in the skull with that thumbtack lace bat driving the tax into her hair in the epidermis of Serena Knight. Oh, raking it across the flesh, opening up some wounds. <clears throat> Heinously, once again, across the skull. Moose, mounting her. Trapping her now with the headbutts, not allowing Sarita to escape. Using her body to trap her underneath, causing some damage to herself in the process with those sickening thuds. I've been told we ran out of security, so the people here in Voice are gonna have to fend for themselves. Oh, oh my god. Man, rolling standing senton, Mickey Knuckles. Five minutes in, they have just unleashed the hatred and violence towards each other. Oh. Mickey Knuckles got caught low right there. Two shots. I think that one caught her in the face. Sarita, who is Sar Saraya, I'm sorry. Don't let her say that. Oh my god. Oh, I apologize in a heartbeat. Oh! Now just laminating the skull with that thumbtack lace bat heinously. Sarita now, or Saria. Jesus. Just slamming Mickey Knuckles face first in that chair. Oh, just caught her on the back too. Oh, just slammed the chair right into her leg. Passion She's gonna try and attack her with that thumbtack bat. Just passionately and violently going at each other. 100% not yeah, letting up. Honestly, have you ever seen a match like this? Mickey Knuckles reminds me of like a female bruiser Brody. Cause she does not stop. She just keeps going. Now what is she doing with the stairs? She's got something in mind. Evil intentions. Now grabbing her with a handful of hair. She's got her in a headlock. When you control the head, you control the body. Got her with a punch for good measure. Her 
Now she's brought her over to those steps that she's moving. Brittany Blake showing how tough she is right now. Taking it to Nevaeh, but once again, Nevaeh catches oh! her and dropping her down that huge tombstone. <laughs> and, and that tombstone might be the death of her career already.